Okay, if I can have your attention, please. We'll uh, continue with our driver press conferences and leading off for the uh, uh, top 12 driver media here at Chicagoland Speedway. We're pleased to be joined by Jeff Burton. He drives the number 31 Caterpillar Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing. He's currently eighth in points. And uh, Jeff, uh, certainly uh, RCR has been one of the uh, big stories of the uh, first half of this season. We are at the season's midway uh, point, and uh, kind of the revival of, uh, of that racing organization has certainly been at the forefront. Uh, maybe talk about that a little bit, how those three cars have, uh, have really uh, turned around this year. Well, it's, uh, you know, obviously last year was, was extremely disappointing, and, and um, you know, we came into this year with a, with a completely different mindset based on the way we ended last year, and, um, you know, it's been, it's been really good. We've, uh, we've been, one of us has been competitive almost every week. Uh, the 31 in particular, I feel like, has run um, run exceptionally well. We've been uh, been a contender an awful lot, you know, throughout the year, and it's been disappointing that we haven't found a way to win. But um, extremely encouraged about the things we have going on, and it's um, you know it's it's time to make it happen. It's uh, it's eight races to go, I believe, and and there's uh, you know times times getting away. So I think everybody is um, at RCR is committed to to doing whatever we have to do to try to win more races and continue to put ourselves in position. And uh, you know this is the this is the time of year I think where the you know it, the grind really you know the grind started you know about a month month and a half ago, and uh, you know a lot of people are looking forward to the chase. Some people are looking back trying to figure out how to make the chase, and it's just a it's a really interesting time of year. So we're in the position to uh, certainly not be locked in by any means. Uh, we could you know we could have a few bad races and find ourselves in position to to be in trouble. So. Uh, we have to we have to try to go out and get wins and get enough bonus points so that when we do, uh, if we do transfer, we'll be in good spot. Uh, at the same time, we can't throw caution to the wind because we've uh, you know we got people behind us that that want the spot we're in. So it's an interesting dilemma, uh, but it's it's something I uh, I'd love to be where Harvick is, but if we can't be where he is, then I'm 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 pretty comfortable where we are. Thank you, Jeff. We'll take questions now for Jeff Burton. Mike Embry has one, and then Mike Mulhern has one right here, and then we'll move the, all the way down this aisle. Mike Hembry, SpeedTV.com. Jeff, as you mentioned, you've run well, haven't won. Same with Gordon. The Earnhardt Ganassi cars have been really good. Uh, haven't gotten the finishes for whatever reason. How do you deal with that kind of uh, quality versus lack of production on, on the end? Is, is there is it an emotional problem, or you talk about it, or, or just hope it works out? Well, I think you have to deal with the facts, and I think you have to look at, at each situation for what that situation was. I think that um, we tend to, to oversimplify things and bunch everything up and say, well, you know, the 31 team's going to run fast, but they're not going to win because they don't know how. And, you know, we, we don't have, we, we don't have that, uh, that luxury. What we have to do is look at every incident, uh, every race, when we were in position and understand why we were in position and then understand what happened in each race and why we didn't capitalize. And when you, when you start to do the analysis, um, it's been an array of things. And so we focus on trying to make those things better. And when you, when you, uh, when you don't do the analysis like that, then I think it does get in your head. I think it does start to, to, to bother you, but, but it's very clear to us where, we, where we've missed it. It's very clear to us the mistakes we've made. Uh, it's also clear to us that I mean, there's been some occasions we didn't do anything wrong. It just something happened, and um, you know when we have we so we've addressed the things that that we felt like we needed to address, while at the same time we're addressing the things that we're doing well. You know we we're doing a whole lot more good than we're doing wrong, and we have to continue to do those good, and we have to do them better. So we're trying not to just focus on the things we haven't done well. We're trying to focus on all of it so that we can improve. Go to Mike Mulhern and then Kenny Bruce. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Mulhern, MikeMulhern.net. You're pretty much uh, the big picture guy, like Mark Martin, the judge about the sport and everything like that. You were critical of the uh, of the action at Sonoma. What's your assessment of what we saw at Daytona? Uh, I, you know, I think I told y'all on on uh, Thursday down there what was going to happen. We were going to have some green flag runs, and it was going to get spread out, and it's going to get single file, and then with 40 to go or so, we're going to start getting cautions, and then we're going to get another one, another one, another one. Wasn't surprised at all. I mean, that's uh, seems like that's what every race happens down there. Well, heck, that's what every race everywhere happens now. But um, you know, I thought it fell right the way I believed it would. Um, it seemed like a normal Daytona race to me, and and um, 
you know, the, the wreck there at the end, you know, Kurt and I, uh, Kurt and I caused that wreck. You know, in retrospect, I don't know what I'd have done different. Um, in retrospect, I'm not sure he should have done anything different either. I think we just went for the same hole at the same time, and and um, you know, it just happened. I watched the video a hundred times trying to, to analyze it, and you know, but the racing prior to all those cautions, I thought was awesome. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Man, when you when you when you are a strip to plate race and you get those cautions late in the race, it's it's game on. It's 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 crazy. I mean, it just is. It's uh, you know, I didn't think that I didn't think this Daytona race was any different than any other Daytona race. We'll go Kenny Bruce, Nate Ryan. Go ahead, uh, Terry. If we can move back to this line here, Kenny Bruce, Nate Ryan, Steve Ballard, David Newton. Go ahead. Kenny Bruce, SingDaily.com. Jeff, you mentioned the chase earlier. How do you feel about when when you look back on it? The fact that when you came into racing, the way you won a championship was one way. Then the chase arrived. Then a couple of years after that, they changed the chase again. And now they're talking about maybe even making more changes to it, possibly. Well, I, I believe whatever NASCAR says, this is the point system. I believe the guy that wins the wins the championship in the point system that NASCAR says this is how you win the championship, that's the champion. If, if NASCAR came in here today and said the way we're going to determine this, whoever wins the last race of the year is the champion, I would think that's insane. But whoever won the last race of the year would be the champion. Um, you know, my focus is on understanding what the rules are and trying to capitalize on them. Um, I think our sport is better today than it was because of the chase. And I, I, I love the history of our sport. But I think that it's more exciting than it was. I'm a, I'm a sports fan. I love to watch sports. I, you know, right now today, the, the intensity level and the pressure that's on us with eight races to go, and then there's another 10 after that, is more than it's ever been because of the chase. The more pressure it is on the competitors, the more fun it is to watch. And so if NASCAR does determine to make a change, I hope that they, I hope they keep in mind that it isn't the body of work that you've done should count. Um, the way our system works is, you know, I don't think I don't think you're going to have a Super Bowl scenario where you have two teams, one race, winner take all. I don't think that that's appropriate for our sport because it is it is an endurance race, and I think the body of work should count. So, whatever change they make. I figure the rule is a rule, and we got to find a way to make it work. I'd love if whatever change is made. I just think it has to have a balance about your body of work and your ability to win and compete at a high level when the pressure's on. And if they if they if they do those things and they enhance the chase and they make it more meaningful, then I think it'd be great for the sport. If they if they move away from the thought of your body of work doesn't count then I don't I don't that wouldn't feel good to me but again whatever they say that's what the rule is and that's what I have to go try to make happen